This is a PowerPoint slideshow and voiceover that is intended to help you to clarify some of the major themes in your reading on the sociological method. There's a total of eight slides in the presentation. If you wish, in fact, I'd encourage you to download them from Blackboard, print them out, and then write notes in them. Please do the reading first before you take a look at this. I intend it to last no longer than half an hour, maybe closer to 25 minutes. The sociological method is a way of looking at religions that enables you to take them seriously without necessarily having to believe in them or agree with them. This method explains religion in terms of society. According to the sociological method, everything about a religion, their rituals, their prayers, their moral values, their beliefs, can somehow be related to the nature or the structure of the society. Once you grasp this method, it becomes a powerful explanatory key that helps you to look at and to understand different religions. The sociological method began with a French scholar in the early 1900s, Emile Durkheim. Durkheim was dissatisfied with two ways of looking at religion at the time that he didn't think were useful to him as a scholar. Being French, although I don't know for a fact, I'm assuming he was probably Christian, but he was going out and studying diverse cultures, for example, the indigenous peoples of Australia, who have a totally different set of beliefs. If he were to look at their religion from a theological perspective, he would have to say that he did not believe in that religion and did not agree with it. The theological perspective views religion as something that comes from God. God gives us the Bible. God has given us the church. Jesus has given us moral teachings. But if you look at a different religion, like the native religions of Australia, they have a completely different idea of God and the ancestors. They don't have a Bible. They have creation stories that are completely different. The theological method, from a Christian point of view, if all you look at is Christianity, can't tell you much about that religion. He was also dissatisfied with the rationalistic way of looking at religions that started to become really popular in the 1800s. Philosophers like Karl Marx, Sigmund Freud, who began or helped to launch the study of psychology, and Ludwig Feuerbach basically were saying that religion is something people made up. It's not real. Marx believed that people in power simply used religion to control the masses, to control other people and keep them in line. Sigmund Freud, as a psychologist, thought that people simply use religion to help them cope with problems that it would be better for them to deal with psychologically. And Ludwig Feuerbach saw religion as simply a projection. We create God in our own image. So I, as an individual, will take the qualities that I most admire or most need and blow them up on a big screen and attribute those qualities to God. So the rationalistic way basically dismisses religion as an illusion. It's something that belongs to the past. It doesn't matter in human life anymore. We don't need it. We don't want to study it. We really don't need to take it seriously. It's best to just kiss religion goodbye and forget about it. Emil Durkheim was dissatisfied with that because he recognized that religion is a very powerful force in human societies, all societies, the indigenous cultures he was studying, as well as even today still our own. So he wanted to come up with a third way of looking at religion that's neither theological nor, nor rationalistic. And he came to see religion as an expression of society. <clears throat> what is society? This is an important question for sociological thinkers. We tend to think of society as just sort of like the backdrop to our everyday life. It's something that's out there, maybe doesn't affect us very much. Maybe we can choose to participate in it or not. From a sociological perspective, society creates us as persons. The human person, so to speak, is the animal without instincts. Other animals are born with instincts that tell them pretty much how to behave. Birds know when to fly south in the winter. Baby lions grow up with the ability to hunt. 
Most animals have instincts that will guide their behavior throughout their lives, and they're born with those. Human beings are born pretty much as a blank slate. We're born with a capacity to learn, but from a sociological perspective, we're not born with instincts that tell us what to do. It's society that gives us those instincts. Society shapes our sense of identity, our morals, our values, our world of meaning. So values, for example, are assumptions that guide the behavior of a society. In U.S. culture, we often talk about family values. A family value would tell you that when you get married, you're supposed to stay married. From a sociological perspective, that has the function of helping the society to survive. Societies need marriages and they need families to continue and to grow, so society creates the value that marriage is important and having children is important. Those guidelines for behavior help the group to survive. So a sociological perspective looks at culture and looks at religion with the question, how does this religion help the group to survive, to form its sense of identity, to give people guidelines for behavior that will help them in their lives? I like to use it as an example. For, for our society, what are the different jobs that people can get? As you're going through college, you're focused on a career, you're thinking about what you want to do with your life. Society has given you those options. In our society, for example, you can become a CEO of a corporation, or you could become a sanitation engineer who picks up the recycling from the curb in the morning. Now, our society tells us which of those jobs is more desirable. Most people would think, without even questioning it, that it's better to be a CEO of a corporation. If you left the United States and moved to a completely different society, let's say somewhere along the Amazon in the rainforest in Brazil, those jobs would not even exist. The job of a CEO would not exist. The job of a, a sanitation engineer would not even exist. You might have the job of, I don't know, a hunter or a leader or a shaman or a wife and mother. So society defines the roles that we as individuals can take on. And society shapes the way we look at the world without us even necessarily being aware of it. So what is religion? What role does religion play within society? Religion helps people to form bonds with the sacred symbols that express the identity of their group. William Podden defines this pretty well on page 30 of the reading. The origin of religion is in the bonds that are formed with the sacred symbols of one's own group. Now his example was, as our reading calls it, the tribal religion of the Australian Aboriginals, or indigenous peoples. And he noticed that in Australia, there were many different tribes or groups of people living in their own places, but they were relatively close together. And yet, each tribe had a completely different set of sacred symbols, a completely different set of creation stories. And those things had meaning within each of those tribes. As an example, or he gives the example of the Chiringa, which is a kind of totem. A totem is a symbol that expresses the identity of the group. The Chiringas were like a piece of wood or a board that's carved with particular symbols that have a meaning to that particular group. This illustration shows one probably created before the year 1800, and the designs are thought by scholars to be kangaroo tracks moving around the center. This particular object would be very important to a particular group because it would express who they were. According to Durkheim, sacredness or holiness is something that is a value that a society places on an object. Sacredness is a value that a society places on an object. So a particular group will decide what objects are sacred to that group. The holy objects, as it says in the reading, were real and powerful because they were charged with the very identity of the group itself. So symbols that somehow relate to the identity of a group of people are called totems. Here are some examples of totems.